Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you how you can quickly and easily set up a flight plan uh, using Dead Reckoning to get your headings as well as your times. So we have two tools here, uh, we have a little nav map on the left, uh, you can grab that one on Google real quick, absolutely fantastic tool. And then over here on the right we have Skyvector, which is just straight up skyvector.com. So what I'm going to do is uh, set up a pretty complicated little flight plan and kind of walk you through how to get everything all set up in it. So we have on the left, we're going to be going from KGLS, Kilo Golf Lima Sierra, which is uh, international in Galveston, Texas, over to Pierce Field, which is 72 Tango Alpha. And uh, we're going to be doing this uh, the most roundabout way I can possibly uh, quickly generate here to kind of make things a little interesting for us. So we're going to go ahead and take off, or we're going to head over to a uh, good old fashioned, we'll pick Garrett here real quick here. You have to just be really, really careful with some of these destinations because they might not show up, but um, I notice Angleton here is on both charts, so we're going to use that one. So to adjust a flight plan in a hurry, I'm just going to click it once, bring it over to where I like it to go, and then I can again click it right where I want it. So I'm going to pop that one right there. I'm going to come over here, click and drag, and I'm going to do the same thing here like that. Now, it's important to notice that um, we can actually dial these values in too. But for today, like I said, I'm just trying to keep it kind of simple to kind of make things interesting for us. So we're going to assume our next point here is going to be a KBYY, uh, this time over in Sky Vector. I'll go ahead and do KBYY. Over on this side of things, I can see it. So I'm just going to click it and go boop, just like that, and pop that one right into our little flight plan as well. And then uh, we'll be weird, and uh, we'll go ahead and pick something that's on the other side of this, like I said, just to kind of keep it interesting. Uh, let's see here. We have Kubeka, which looks pretty good to me. And Palacios is actually right there. Interesting that uh, this one has VR, this one doesn't. Cool. Doesn't bother me. All right. We'll go give that a quick little drag. Pop it on right there. Looks good. We'll call this one Palacios. So I'll come over here. We're going to go ahead and click it once. Pop it over here like that. Awesome. Now, of course, I'm looking at this real quickly, side by side, and I'm a little bothered by the fact that I actually picked the wrong destination airfield. So I have to actually come over here and fix that real quick. I'm just going to press OK. Hey, hey, all fixed. Looks good to me. I'll go ahead and delete that. We don't need it. Good. So when I look at these things now side by side, I can see very clearly that they are the same shape, same pattern. Everything actually looks really, really good for this particular purpose here. So actually, I like this. I like this. So now we have the tough part. Uh, we have to figure out what direction we have to point our plane, and we have to figure out how long we have to fly it in that direction. Now, this is where things are going to differ quite a bit. Over in Sky Vector, it's constantly pulling real-world weather. So if I come up here to the top right corner, I can actually dial in my aircraft estimated cruise speed. Let's say, for example, I'm traveling in a uh, Piper Archer 3. Uh, that would be 116 for me. And then what I could do is actually dial in the desired altitude. Uh, we're going to be traveling west, so we'll do a 045, enter. And it'll actually work out a bunch of these details for us. Again, this is on the Sky Vector side. As a matter of fact, I can press this button right here. And you'll see it actually breaks it down beautifully. It shows that we need to go on a 252 heading for 33 nautical miles. It's 20.3 minutes. Oh, to get to our next destination, it's going to be 249 or true, also known as 247 heading uh, for 12.7 minutes. And we can work it out this way. Uh, if this particular arrangement doesn't work for you, uh, one of the things you can actually do is if you go back to the main page of this little lever, you can click on nav log down here and it'll actually pop up this little screen that'll make it real, real easy to identify your individual components. It even calculates top of climb and top of descent. It's not perfect, but it's darn good i wish i had this back when i was learning to fly back in the day it also does this which is awesome it'll give you another pro diagram and breaks it down all nice and neatly if we were flying this for like a video or something like that uh, what we would do of course is we'd sneak in here and we'd basically uh, go ahead and mark off the actual time it takes and be sitting over their stopwatch and everything like that kind of keeping it kind of easy over here in little nav map, things are going to be a bit different, however. And uh, you'll notice here that uh, we can come in here, we can put our 4,500 feet in like we did before. We can set this to VFR, which it is. But you're going to notice if I expand this, I'm actually going to make this a uh, full screen here so it's a little easier for you folks to see. If I expand this, uh, you'll notice here that the courses are about the same. The distances are correct. Um, the times are all horribly wrong. And uh, you're sitting here going, wait, what? Uh, that doesn't make sense. Why are my times so wrong? This particular program, Little Nav Map, requires performance files, or it requires you to edit a file in order to get accurate distances and times. So if I go up to aircraft real quick, you'll notice there's this button that says Edit Aircraft Performance. If I open this real quickly here, I can actually come in here and edit this. So for example, my required runway, I'll put in 1,800 feet. Oops, it helps if you don't press enter right away. Put in 1,800 feet. Uh, we can come into here to performance, and we can basically dial everything in. Weight, fuel, taxi fuel, average climb speed. Average climb speed for us is about 75. That's actually pretty good. Fuel flow is correct. Average cruise speed, we'll put in our 116. Uh, we can do that. Fuel flow, that's actually a little high for us. Average descent, actually, it's a little higher. It's usually about 120 knots. And uh, that's actually a little bit higher, but... 
Again, I'm not going to worry about that 100 uh, too much. Let's see. Alternate if we're trying to cruise to somebody else. It's about 160. That sounds pretty good. All right. I'm going to press OK and save. It's going to be like, are you sure you want to do this? And again, these are all values you need to get from your aircraft. So we'll go ahead and say 172. Nice. Let's see what happens. All right. Now, if you observe, you will see that the numbers have changed substantially. Uh, you can see here that um, we now have actual times. It expects the first one to take 20, the next one to take 12, the next one to 14, and 9. Now, if I come over here real quick and pop this open, take a look. 20, 12, 14, no, it's is closer to 10, but that's okay. And you can see that the two sets of values are actually darn tootin' close. And uh, that's just a quick, easy way. Now, if you were to actually to fly this flight, uh, the way you would do it is pretty easy. You would take off, you'd point your aircraft at a heading of uh, 252, you travel for about 20 minutes, then you go ahead and take a turn to 247, 232, 187, and then each one of those times would be broken down for you to make it nice and easy. Keep in mind, if you're going to do a flight like this, obviously you need to make sure that when you cross a particular point that you reset whatever time you're using. Otherwise, again, you could be building up that error that gets progressively worse the longer your flight goes. Enjoy.